Okay. Hey, what's up, my friends? I am Scott Ian, and I am here to tell you what I think are the 11 heaviest anthrax riffs. Remember, this is what I think in my humble or not so humble opinion. I'm gonna start with our first album, Fistful of Metal, because I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't have the first riff from the first song on our first album, which is Death Rider. What a way to announce ourselves to the world with that just epitome of kind of thrash metal riff. Uh, Danny Loker wrote that riff. It's still to this day the riff I warm up on when uh, before shows, you know, an hour before showtime when I'm backstage. I'm just, I, I try and get to like 218 BPM on my metronome. And, you know, if I could play that riff that fast, I know I'm definitely ready to get on stage because it's not very easy to play. But man, what a riff. Uh, uh, just, just such an ass kicker. Um, really, 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 really makes me want to bang my head. So yeah, Death Rider. Opening riff of Death Rider would be first on my list. Two two things come to mind from spreading the disease. The breakdown section of AIR. Which what we used to call back in the day, we used to call it the mosh part. When we get to like the middle bridge of a song, um, I guess maybe we didn't even know to call it a bridge. We would just go, what's the mosh part? Because from going to see like hardcore bands in the early 80s, they would always, you know, they would have the fast verse and then slow it down to like halftime. And that's the, the whole crowd would erupt like popcorn popping. So we always thought of that breakdown section it was called the mosh part. So the mosh part of AIR, that middle section, where we're just going gung, 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 gung. And then it goes gang, gang, That part for me, man, is just such a stomper. Uh, love it. Charlie wrote that part. Uh, love that riff. Also from Spreading the Disease, I got to say that the opening riff of Madhouse. I mean, it's just so iconic. And I really feel like it. It's kind of the riff that put Anthrax on the map. That whole, that, that chug, that gut, 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 gang, 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 I mean, and my guitar tone on that record, it's when I, I really like kind of found my tone with the JCM 800 Marshall with the TC Electronic boost pedal in front of it. And that's my, my Jackson Rhodes that I got in like 1982 or 83. Yeah, that opening riff of Madhouse too, it, and still to this day, anytime we start that riff, the crowd just, you know, just blows up. And I guess maybe there's one more on this record too. The fast, probably the fastest song we ever wrote, Gung Ho. Probably that main riff. That one too, I mean, it's kind of like Death Rider, but even better. It's thrash. I mean, it's the last song on spreading the disease, and it kind of really kind of shows you what road we were on heading towards Among the Living <laughs> at the end of spreading, because, you know, it, it, it really made a statement. I remember back then in the day, you know, that song was probably written in 85 or something. And, you know, back then, double kick, especially in the what people were calling speed metal, I guess, at the time. And who had the fastest double kick drums, you know? And of course, Charlie was such a great drummer and you had Lombardo, who's such a great drummer and Tom Hunting, you know, from Exodus, such a, um, all these guys just blazing fast, you know? And and uh, yeah, and I feel like Charlie just really set the bar with, with Gung Ho, with the double kick on that song. It's just insane. Among the Living, Okay, I gotta go right with, with the song Among the Living, the opening riff. Brutal. 
brutal. How many years later, from 87 till now, 30, 35 years later, the pit still explodes whenever we start that song. Oh, one of, Char one of Charlie's heaviest riffs of all time, certainly. That intro to Among. So I've got, what, five now. So I guess my next one, I, I mean, Caught in a Mosh, again, the breakdown section. That build up uh, when we go into that da 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 I can't help myself. It's just such, it's like I feel the wind at my back. I just, I can't help, I can't help but stomp and bang my head whenever we play that part. That breakdown section of Caught in a Mosh would have to be on my list. I think I gotta go with the intro to Imitation of Life for seven. Gong, gong. I mean, that's just, it's just brutal. It just, it makes me want to, if I was a crazy person, I would have like two swords and I would, I would run through crowds of people stabbing them. Like that's what, that's what that, that's what that riff makes me want to do. <laughs> it just all comes out when I stomp around on stage. So yeah, that imitation of life one. Oh, crusher. I love the breakdown section of Now It's Dark. And it's in A, which is odd, because other than Death Rider, most of the heaviest parts are not in A. But we went back to an A riff, and it's that section that goes and then it drums kick in and even the the whole part i'll send you a love uh, i'll send you a love letter straight from the bottom of my heart and you'll be f forever the candy coated clown has done his part that whole section for me that that now it's dark riff god damn it it's so heavy um maybe a deeper track i sometimes think like oh people aren't so familiar meanwhile they, everyone probably knows the song but um, I don't know why I consider that one a deeper track. I guess, I mean, I, I guess I gotta, I gotta put off of uh, Four All Kings, the Suzerain and e e Evil Twin both have fucking great parts. Ah, oh, but what about What Doesn't Die? All right, yeah, you know what? For number nine, I'm gonna say What Doesn't Die from We've Come For You All. When we get to the breakdown section of that, I remember it's the part that goes and then it's like and the lyrics that part of stream of consciousness flows into a river of blood and this tide of violence as it rises like a flood that whole section oh my god I remember when we were writing that and there was a point where we knew we wanted this really heavy bridge section, like really break it down and just then build it up, uh, you know, so people could lose their minds. And it was one of those moments, I, I think I said it in the room, I was like, what would the Bad Brains do? And uh, we came up with that. Oh man, it's just so grinding and so heavy. Uh, one of my favorite parts to play ever. Another one of those riffs that I find myself always playing like when I'm warming up. It's just one of those ones I always go back to. I had to save these two for the final two spots because I think in my mind, these are the two heaviest riffs ever in Anthrax. For me, they're the most fun to play and I, I think they're the heaviest. Uh, the first one is the intro, the main riff to keep it in the family. And then when it gets when the groove kicks in into the I mean it's just God damn it. It's just such a crusher of a riff that Charlie wrote. We still play that song live 
pretty consistently. It's one of those ones that doesn't come out of the set too often um, because it's like, oh, to dig in on that riff, um, it's just so much fun. Um, and it, you know, I, I could look out at the crowd and see that they feel the same. <laughs> it's never a question as to how people feel about that riff and that song. Um, people get very excited when they hear it. For number 11, or number one, however you want to look at it, because I do think it's the heaviest moment so far in uh, Anthrax, uh, is the war dance section of Indians. Where uh, we break it down, that's a bridge that I wrote, actually. We were looking for, again, back in the old days, what we called our a mosh part. And uh, we knew we were gonna break it down to a really heavy bridge. And uh, I came up with that war dance riff. Um, it actually came out of, just because I was playing this pattern on the guitar, it was almost like a warm up idea that I had. It was this very kind of symmetrical thing I would play, I, but I was just playing it like single notes and I would kind of play it faster. And it was the thing I would do to warm up. And then I slowed it down and played chords with it and palm muted it. And I was like, Jesus, that's fucking heavy. Like, damn it, that, that might work for that Indians thing that we're looking for. And uh, yeah, we started jamming on that war dance riff way back when. And um, it was one of those moments where we kind of knew we had something really good. Like you're in the room going, wow, can't wait to play this live. People. People are really going to like this because we were just losing our minds jamming on it. Uh, you know, remember, this is like 1986. It was all still young and fresh and new. And we were like, oh, my God, listen to this part, you know. So, yeah, I, I think War Dance, I think that section. It's still to this day, it's probably the biggest moment of the night as far as the pit's concerned and that kind of crowd energy and uh man it's um yeah it never fails it never fails to please me or you know or the or the audience um so yeah um there you have it i leave that out there for you my friends um argue amongst yourselves <laughs> or argue with me although i probably won't respond to please don't bring swords to the shows <laughs> unless it's unless it's an evening only for samurai then then it might be a different story if you could prove that you're an actual samurai you're allowed to bring your sword in <laughs>